Good afternoon and welcome to Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Today we have a special guest from Bristol County Agricultural High School, Leslie Blanchett, who is a small animal teacher and she is the chair of the department. And her guest today is Hope, and your last name is? Sadal. Sadal, and she is from Rehoboth. And they are going to talk about the great things at Bristol Aggie. Welcome, ladies. It's great to see you. You've got a little guest, uh, a new guest with us. We do. Tell us about him. This is Milo. He is a 10-month-old English Cocker Spaniel. Um, he's making a lot of noise today, so he wants to be in the interview. Um, He's 10 months old, and um, he is a show dog, but more importantly, he is a pet as well as a, um, basically a teacher himself. He teaches my students all about uh, different things like grooming, and he, and he helps in the classroom uh, quite a bit. Could you talk about, Leslie, we'll start with, tell us about the Small Animal Science Program at Bristol Aggie. Sure, the Small Animal Science Department is one of seven different agricultural programs that the school offers. Um, the Animal Science Department encompasses both small animals as well as large animals. Um, students learn all about the care and management as well as different career paths that are in the field of the animal science uh, field as well as um, you know they could go on to colleges they can go on to uh, start their own businesses a lot of our students do you know either of those things they might even want to do both um, most of our school our students do actually go on to college however and many of them a growing number of them go on to earn veterinary science degrees and uh, in other sciences as well. We have, yeah, we have had a few that, that have gone on um, to veterinary school and are practicing currently. Very good. What is your involvement at the school? How long have you you've been? You are a junior. How did you get interested in Bristol Aggie? Well, I'd heard about it from my cousin, but um, as a seventh grader, I actually attended the Summer Academy, which really got me interested in the Animal Science Department. And then I applied um, in my eighth grade year to come as a freshman. This, now, what is this program? That's something that I, I've read about and you know heard about. What is that little that program involved? The Summer Academy. The Summer Academy. So it's basically um, middle student middle school students can come to the school, the animal science department, and learn about the animals. They do care. They learn all the different things we do with them at the school and they get a chance to handle and experience the animals. That's very good. So that's something that young people that are looking for something to do over the summer can get involved with. And you could they could find information online or from by calling the school, correct? Would that be correct, yeah. yeah. The Summer Academy started um, quite a few years ago and it was a way to uh, bring some of our students that were interested in Bristol Aggie into the school to see if it was really um, some a program that they really wanted to be in. So it's kind of an outreach that we do. Um, and we accept students in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. They can come. Um, we do hold it for two weeks over the summertime. Um, we have four different animal science programs that students can participate in. Um, it's a growing program. We usually are full, um, even leading up to it. So it is, it's very So it's this might be a good time to start for students to start thinking about the Summer Academy. Yeah, it is. It is. Because it probably will fill up rapidly. It does fill up very, very quickly. It's one of those programs that, um, you know, if you don't jump on it, it is unfortunately uh, full. But uh, I don't think they've released the dates yet, but pretty soon they should be. Very, very good. What is a typical day for you, Hope, as at a, school? As a junior, I attend my academic classes in the morning, so I'll have my English, my math, and my science class in the morning, and then I'll take up what we call related classes, which are classes that are basically related to the major that you're studying. So as a small animal student, I take career development, genetics, nutrition, anatomy, animal ethics, and animal health as my related classes. And then after that, we'd go to lunch, and then I'd spend the rest of the afternoon in my vocational major. Small animals. 
And t talk about that. Just talk about the inv your involvement with the small animals. What do you What do you learn about? Well, every day we do our daily chores. So, as well as learning about the animals, you do have to work on their care and health, and that includes you know cleaning out their cages, um, and making sure they have proper food and water and everything that they need. And then after that is mostly notes, which are actually wicked interesting. I love like the stuff we learn in that major. This year we focused on birds, reptiles, aquatics, animals, and but we also get into a little bit on the dogs and cats. It's kind of everything and each teacher has a little bit more to offer. They, everybody has a little bit of a different as, um, like outlook and aspect in it, so you're always learning constantly from different people, so you get to learn a little bit. So you're everything. exposed to several areas, so it's not all about cats or about do you learn about different mm -hmm. different uh, aspects of the animal world. Yes. Very good. Would you like to be a veterinarian someday? Hopefully, yes. <laughs> is that what you're yeah, focused that's, on? Yeah, that's where my goal is to be a veterinarian when I'm older. That would be good. <laughs> Any specialty? Um, hopefully small animals, mostly cats and dogs, but anything, I'm really open-minded. What kind of pets do you have? You live in Rehoboth. What kind of animals do you have at home? I have chickens and guinea pigs. Talk about your guinea pigs. Um, there's just, I just have two of them. They are wicked friendly. The more I feel like the, I found, the more you um, interact with them, the friendlier they become. So they can hear me and they'll start going crazy. They scream at me. <laughs> There's little squeaks to get food, and um, they really just like being um, interacted with. Very good. I remember, Leslie, many, many years ago that Bristol Aggie was more of a vocational school, and I guess it still is, mm -hmm. but there are, there is a very strong concentration now in academics and sciences and everything. What are students learning about at Bristol Aggie now, these well, days? Well, I think one of the misconceptions that people have about Bristol Aggie is that academics is not um, one of our strong suits, but in reality, it actually is a, a um, strong because it's it, very academically it's challenging. Very academically challenging. And if you think about even in the vocational side of the house, so you have animal science and plant science, and if you think about those names, science, that's what we're doing every single day. Um, the students are learning a lot of. Um, base knowledge on science, mathematical, mathematics. Um, they use everyday ac academics in their vocational class every single day, regardless of if they're an animal science major or an arbor major or an agricultural mechanics major. So academics is kind of at the forefront of what we do. Um, and you know, obviously, they love to learn about their majors. So in, in our department in animal science, we're using the animals as a tool to help kids learn not only their animal um, curriculum that they have to learn, but also their academic curriculum as well. What do you, what, what aspect do you teach? I teach a little bit of everything. Um, so I start off, I teach sophomores and I teach seniors. Um, my sophomores learn all about companion animals. They learn um, most of the AKC dog breeds. So we go over all of them, just about. Um, they have to learn animal behavior. They learn a lot about um, how to care for animals, animal ethics. Um, we go over a lot of business related stuff as well. If they wanted to own their own business or open their own grooming shop or canine training facility, uh, by the time they end their senior year at Bristol Aggie, they do know enough that they could actually go out and, and start their own business. Uh, my seniors, I do a little bit about lab animal management. Um, I also have a class that we go over veterinary assisting, so the students are outside taking care of the animals, um, doing basic kind of vet assisting work. Um, do they work outside like in a veterinary hospital? Many of our students do, yes. Many of them do work in a vet hospital. Um, some of them work for um, doggy daycares or boarding facilities or groomers, um, pet stores, so anything related to animals you'll find, you usually find one of our kids there. Um, I also teach a little bit about marine biology. Um, so we try, to, we try to talk about the different facets of the industry. 
was it last year that I, I did a wrote a story in the paper <clears throat> at the Standard Times where you had taken a group down to Disney World and you worked in marine science. We did. Talk yeah. about that. That was fascinating. So I've done actually a few of these um, programs. I usually take juniors and seniors down to um, Disney World in Florida and we participate in the Disney Yes program. It's the Disney Youth Educational Series and students learn all about different career paths in the animal industry. Um, they do learn a lot about, there's some marine science uh, work that they do. The students actually get behind the scenes. They, they take a look at, um, and actually Hope went on. Did you go on last year? Oh, no. you didn't, sorry. Um, I thought you did. Um, but they, they, they see a lot of the behind the scenes tours. We went into the giraffe housing. We go above the aquarium and, and meet the Disney dolphins. Um, so it was a great time. We go for a week and um, they get very enthusiastic, um, not only going, but as well as when they come home, they really want to learn more. It's a more. rewarding experience. Oh, it is. A lot of the students, you know, some students have been, other students have never been, um, other students have never flown on an airplane. Um, so last time we took, I believe, 38 students. So it was it was quite the trip. It a was a remarkable pretty big. experience for them. It, yes, it was absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so you've done a lot of great things, including your new addition here, Milo. Talk about the English cocker. So um, before him, I had an English Springer Spaniel, um, which was great. I love the personality. They they do have um, you know quite the personality, um, but I wanted to get a smaller dog, so I chose the English Cocker, um, just because I actually had a student that had one before, and I absolutely just fell in love with him, and I thought that he was just an amazing dog. Um, so I shopped around a little bit, um, located a, a very good breeder um, in the area, and um, visited her house and decided that the English Cocker Spaniel was a breed for, for me. And so I decided to um, get him. We started showing. His show career started the day after he turned six months. And um, so he's been showing quite a bit. Um, not as much as he wants to. He, he loves to show. Um, whenever I get out his, um, his show jacket, he gets very excited because he knows he's going. But um, he's been doing really well. He earned a point. He has. He's earned a point. Um, towards and his championship. Towards his championship, which in this breed is sometimes a little difficult, but um, hopefully he's going to another show next week and hopefully he'll earn more. What uh, you do now, people can come to Bristol Aggie and have you do groom dogs, don't you? We do. We have a grooming program. Yes, talk about that. So we do have a grooming program. Um, our sophomores do run most of the grooming program. Um, so community members can have their dogs groomed. The dogs do have to meet our requirements and our requirements are pretty strict because we wanna make sure that dogs that are coming in are healthy. Um, we do require uh, vaccines um, and that you know the dog is regularly checked by a veterinarian just because there's a lot of diseases that can be transmitted um, from, from dogs being in the same area with each other. So we wanna make sure that they're of good health before they come in. They also have to have good temperaments too. Um, so it's important because we have students that maybe have never really worked with dogs. Um, so it's, it's beneficial for us to have good temperament dogs when they, when they come in. Um, but general public can call and make appointments or they can email us and um, we take any dog, it doesn't matter of the breed, as long as they have proper vaccines and as long as they um, have good temperaments. And they pay a, a um, nominal fee? Right now we don't charge because of the fact that our students are learning. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of take into consideration that the dogs are not going to be, they're going to be groomed very well, um, but there might be some clipper marks or there might be, um, we might not have gotten to do nails that day because of the fact that we might have had assembly or maybe we had other things that were going on. So um, our, <laughs> he's saying hi. Hi. So our, um, Hello, my wow. <laughs> our clients know this and they know that they're just students, you know, starting out. So it's important for us to, to have, um, you know, clients that understand that it's an educational faci facility first. Um, 
you know, and then whatever we can do um, as far as grooming and what we have time for, we definitely do. Have you learned what part of, have you done any grooming? Yes, yeah, so all last talk, year, talk to every Tuesday that. morning we did grooming. All last year as a sophomore I did. And um, really what you start out with is brushing them. You get all of their dead coat out and you want to make sure there's no debris. And then we put the dogs in the bathtub we give them a nice uh, bath. We have a bunch of different shampoos we use based on the dog's requirements and what their owners might need or ask for. And then after that they get um, blow dried. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer just due to the fact that some dogs do have thick coats or double coats. That is probably the part of grooming that takes the longest. And then you brush them out again and if the owners request clipping, you'll do that. But every time we clean the ears, we make sure their nails are all set too. So it's a very long, comprehensive process. Yes. Do you have a favorite breed that you like? Not really. Have I'm you, not really picky. Have, but you've learned there's 186 or 188 <laughs> breeds. Uh, have you, do you have a favorite breed? I really like Huskies. You do? Yeah. Very good. Now, do they, they learn obedience too? They do, yes. I have um, almost an entire term dedicated to learning dog obedience. Um, usually it's in the spring when the weather is cooperating with us. And so each student will be paired with a dog and they have that dog for the entire term. So for about eight, 10 weeks. Um, and they learn basic commands. Um, the whole point in the students learning obedience is to not only teach a dog some basic obedience commands, but also to understand animal behavior. If you can understand animal behavior, as you know, um, you have more success with working with that animal. Um, so it's really kind of a, a team effort. The dog and the student do put a lot of work and, and effort into it. So there's a lot more just to just going to Bristol Aggie and doing nothing all day. They work hard, don't they? Oh, they work hard. And I think especially um, in, in every single department, but especially the animal science department, um, students are out working every single day, whether it's raining, snowing, sleeting, if it's 105 degrees, our students are outside with the animals daily because we need to make sure that, that animal chores are done, that the animals are fed um, and maintained appropriately. Do we either want to, could you basically uh, just uh, a little uh, spend some time addressing uh, the large animal science? Have you both, you, you, well, you <laughs> both have, you've uh, worked with large animals? Mm -hmm. So I'm actually a student worker for the animal science department. So okay, great. before school, after school, weekends, holidays, school vacations, over summer vacation. I'll actually be at the school because even though we don't have school, the animals still need to get cared for. And then also, one cool thing about the animal science department is third term you actually swap majors. So if you're a small animal science major, third term you'll actually do um, a term of large animal science and vice versa. So everybody, what, no matter which animal science major you're in, you get a little bit of everything, both So you've worked sides. with cows mm -hmm. and la sheep. Mm -hmm. Lambs. Yep. Pigs. Yep. What else? Horses. Horses. The Llama. Equines. Llama. <laughs> Llamas. Llamas are getting to be very popular around here. They they are. Yeah. Llamas and alpacas are. And alpacas. Yep. Yep. I think you know it's important to note too that our student workers and our faculty start at five thirty in the morning. Um, a lot of our students who are student workers, you know, they're at school, they start at 5.30 in the morning and they might not leave until 4.30, 5 o'clock if they're, you know, on the basketball team or, so it's long hours. Um, not every student has to stay there that long hours, but they're dedicated. They're very dedicated to our program, they're dedicated to our animals, and just the dedication to the school is amazing to see. Um, even if they don't work at the school, kids, it's not uncommon for a student to be on the bus for an hour or two in the morning or in the afternoon. Um, and it's, it, you know, it kind of shows the dedication that they have to the school and the program. I've known students that have come in the morning at 6.30, mm -hmm. 5.30, and stayed. They didn't get home till they got dropped off on the bus mm -hmm. at almost at 6.30 and 7 o'clock at night. Yeah. 
It's been a long day. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a, a graduate. I'm an alumni. You are. I'm still a Aggie. very proud alumni. Yeah, I'm very proud alumni. And um, I would actually leave my house at 5.30 in the morning. And sometimes, because I played basketball or volleyball, I wouldn't be home until 8. So it, it's definitely, um, you know, I live that life. I know exactly what the students go through. Um, but they do, they love it. And, you know, most of our students come from various different towns and communities. They're not local. Um, so they do have to... They come a long distance. They do. A lot of them do come a long distance. I don't know what the longest is. Um, <laughs> however, some do come from the Cape. Um, so, you know, there is, there's a lot of traveling involved. But they do it because they want to and that they love the school. I heard recently that there is a growing number of potential students from Rhode Island who would like to come to Bristol Aggie. Oh, I'm sure that they would want to, but they, I but don't. They can't they get can't, in. Yeah, because they're out of state. They can't get in they're because out they're out of town and they're out yeah. of, uh, out of the, the region. Yeah. But uh, Bristol Aggie is a very popular place. Oh, it is. And uh, it's a growing school. Mm -hmm. It is. We're actually um, starting a large expansion pretty soon. It's a great place. Mm -hmm. We are um, in the process of expanding. Um, we're putting up some new buildings. We are making, actually it's pretty um, amazing because the animal science department is, is kind of going to change. Um, we are putting up a three-story building that's going to house environmental science, natural resources, the science department, and animal science. Um, so it's going to be a center um, just kind of for science. We're going to have all the sciences there. Um, and we're actually, actually going to be building a brand new robotic dairy barn as well. So we're pretty excited about the future of Bristol Aggie. It is a wonderful school. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know last year I was very honored to have uh, participated with the, uh, in a scholarship program that was offered by the Wampanoag Kennel Club. Right. And we awarded a, uh, our club or awarded a $500 scholarship to Bristol Aggie for, I believe it was utilized for small animals. Yes, I believe it was a student that um, was going to go on to um, right, have a career in small animals. And yes. wanted to be a veterinarian. Yes, yes, which we have a lot of students that, that do. And I just found out this afternoon that the scholarship is going to be re rewarded. Oh, that's exciting. So that'll be very good. Yeah. Because you people do some great things. I think it's, you know, it's important for our, for our students to know, too, that they have support outside of the walls of Bristol Aggie. And it's really um, amazing that an organization like, like yours is willing to, you know, help a student and start their future. Milo is investigating. He is. He is. Well, he's 10 months old, and if he's definitely, he sees the marks on the floor, and he thinks they're food. So <laughs> Now he earned his CGC? Yeah, he is a canine good citizen. Um, so he has earned that, and um, he likes to talk. That's why you hear him moaning a little bit. So. Do the students uh, in, your, uh, in your major... Uh, do uh, they study the CGC program? We talk a little bit about it. They talk a little bit about it. Actually, this year we, um, we're going to start in, with our obedience class, um, start talking about the different um, tests that, that somebody can take. We'll be talking about um, the Canine Good Citizens program. We'll be talking about trick dog training, um, That's because rally. They were talking last night at the Westminster Kennel Club about trick dog training. Yes. That is a whole new aspect. It's, it is, and it's, it's very popular. Actually, he's going to be going for his trick dog um, title pretty soon. So he's very excited about it. <laughs> and people are, uh, they were talking last night on TV, too, about dock diving. There are so yes. many new aspects of the sport. Dock diving is really popular as well. Um, and it's, it's pretty exciting to see, just like the obedience trials are. You know, we used to have a lot of um, confirmation and then obedience trials. And now with trick dog training and rally and dock diving, there's so much to do in the canine industry. Very, very good. Let me see you. Milo.
He's looking for treats. He's looking. <laughs> come on Say over. Hi. He's looking. I should have brought you. I should have brought you a cookie. You are a handsome, handsome boy. Come on. Good boy. Very, very handsome boy. So what else can we talk about today with uh, Br at Bristol Aggie? What are some other things you'd like to focus on? Well, I think that, um, you know, part of Bristol Aggie, um, you know, we talked before about the National FFA organization. A lot of our students do participate in the FFA organization. Um, it is an organization for students who are enrolled in agricultural education. Um, we've been fortunate that we've had a um, FFA charter for a very long time. Um, our students compete in all sorts of career development events. Um, they're not really contests, but you know they are competitive. Um, they are something that students can take the knowledge of what they're learning in the classroom and kind of apply it to real world situations. So um, right now actually I have students who are getting ready to go to the state veterinary science career development event, um, which our school actually won the national competition in 2016 so we're pretty excited to go back to the state level and hopefully you know earn the right to go to the national um, level in next year that's very very good so the students have to work hard they do um, and it requires them to uh, to learn about all kinds of different aspects of dogs and cats and animals and animals in general there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different components of the actual program that um, do make the students study hard. Um, actually, Hope is on our team this year. Um, she's been you know, working over the last month, or month and a half, to um, really prepare for this career development event. It's, it's happening the end of February. And what's that going, where will that be held? I think it's at, is it at Essex Aggie? It again? is, it is, yeah. And it's like a competition, not competition, but it's a like a uh, yeah. contest yeah. In, a wor in other words it is they are i mean they don't want to call them contests because <laughs> yeah. um you that's know that's not a good word not a, uh, sure <laughs> it's, not, it's not the best word to describe them um, they call them career development events because it does try to focus around different careers that are available. Um, so this one obviously targets the veterinary side. So a vet assistant, a vet technician, or a veterinarian. So different things that the students can do. There's different aspects to the actual competition. The students do have to take an exam. Um, they have to take a general knowledge identification test. So they're tested on veterinary equipment, breeds, um, parasite identification. They also have a math component, so there's that there's academic a lot going side, on. <laughs> um, as well as they have hands-on practicums. So they need to demonstrate four different skills that they would be doing in a veterinary setting. So it might be anything from um, giving an injection all the way to, you know, handling and restraining an animal or um, applying ear ointment or eye ointment. So there's a number of different things that, that they would have to show the judge how and why. They have to explain why they're going to do it. Well, very good. Well, thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, again, we invite you to uh, participate uh, by sending questions in. A lot of people have sent questions. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon at, at, with Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Okay, thank you, and thanks. Thank you. And we're done. <laughs>